I'm, I'm Willie Bielsma. I'm uh, from Oakdale, California. Uh, I've been in the dairy business for about 43 years now, and it's uh, been quite a, an experience. Uh, we started with 100 cows after I got out of the uh, Army back in 1969, and I uh, have been uh, quite successful, had uh, a good family, four children that grew up on the dairy, and we began with uh, one place in um, Oakdale, and we've expanded to this facility where we're at now, and I've also uh, been in partnership with a son, also in a dairy in Merced. Uh, we began with Holsteins back in 69, and we went into crossbreeding in the year 1999. So it's about 12 years that we've been crossbreeding. And uh, I just have to say that uh, it's been a good experience uh, with uh, working with these cattle because they've been uh, so easy to take care of, and yes, we may have a little bit less milk than before, but our components are higher, so we come out just as well on on um, the milk checks as what we did before, and, uh, and they are so much easier to take care of. With our culling rate has dropped drastically. We have to look for cows to sell now. So it's all voluntary culling instead of involuntary culling. And the other thing that uh, really think is great on these crossbreds is the fact that they uh, breed back so easily. We uh, quite a few services for conception. The calving interval is shortened up by two months. And uh, also, the number of cows that die on the dairy is way, way down. So, uh, we, we started with uh, Montbilliard and Swedish Red and the Norwegian Red cattle. That's what we began with. And uh, over a period of time, we also used some Red Day. But since uh, Things have changed a little bit. We are just going on a three-way rotation. And uh, we are back with some F3s and 4s going back to Holstein again also. Yeah, we've always used, as far as the genetics in this dairy, we always used the best Holsteins that were available to create genetics. Uh, we always had the, the top Holsteins that when we went to crossbreeding, we still continue to use the best bulls that were offered by uh, Viking Genetics and the Montbilliard breed. So to complete the cycle, we're using the, the Pro Cross, still use the best animals that are available. And as far as uh, the udders and, and all of the confirmation things, we, we just uh, don't even look at which bulls to use on a certain cow. We just do it automatically when the whole scene needs the hot billy yard and then over to the uh, Viking Red and we continue to do that. We don't have any mating service. Uh, our cows last at least two years longer than before. Yeah, you can always find some reasons to sell a few when the, some udders get large, but it's usually in the sixth and seventh, eighth lactation that we look at selling cows because of that. So cows do last a long time, and that's what we really like is the fact that uh, 
cows stay around a long time, we have more heifers than what we need, and that becomes a problem because they they eat so much feed and we can't continue to grow. So uh, we're looking at different avenues of maybe breeding some of the, the uh, cattle to beef bulls also because we have so many uh, replacement heifers that we don't need. As far as the cattle themselves, uh, they are very easy to take care of. The hoof, the feet and legs of the cattle are very good. Um, we still fight with the hairy warts a little bit, but uh, so much different than the Holstein. They continue to walk and and don't go way off on feed when they have some foot problems. But we rarely do uh, much foot trimming here. And, uh, so that part is very good. The other thing that's uh, very good also is uh, the temperament of the cattle. Uh, I feel that they are more docile and easier to work with than the Holsteins ever were in all my years of being in the dairy. And um, also, yeah, they carry more weight. They, a lot of times that works in the animal's favor uh, when they have some problems with their health because they, care, they are able to uh, withstand some of the challenges of milking a lot. Yes, on, the, on our home dairy we still do some grazing of the uh, dairy cows. Um, one thing that I've noticed over the years uh, that we've had the crossbreds, they are uh, better at keeping their body condition uh, when the value of the, the grass goes downhill. And uh, we don't have to supplement them usually until uh, the end of November when the grass is finished. And uh, so, that, that is one uh, thing I think that works very well is, is, uh, with these crossbreds is the, is the grazing part. Uh, I don't do that on this dairy where we're doing this uh, shot now, but uh, they are very efficient. They are very good at uh, converting feed uh, that's maybe not of the highest quality and still maintain their body condition and give plenty of milk with high components. One thing that we have noticed with these uh, cows that are dry, they carry quite a bit of flesh, but it is not a problem when they come fresh with uh, all these metabolic problems that you have with Holstein when they are over conditioned. Uh, we do not have cows leaving uh, because of uh, fatty livers and uh, having a hard time getting going. So that's a non-issue here with, uh, with dry cow uh, condition. On this dairy, we are milking 1,200 cows. And uh, two-thirds of this herd is milked three times a day, and the other third two times a day. And it fits very well with the, the labor force that we have here. Um, as far as this barn goes, it's a uh, double 22 herringbone barn, and we are, uh, the cows milk very easily in this place. Um, the number of cows that we have sold because they are slow milkers is probably five or six in the six years that I've been on this facility. So, the milking speed is fine. They milk, uh, you know, 
per shift, probably about 1,700 cows on each shift. So and they do that within eight and a half hours with three employees in the barn at a time. Yeah, on this dairy, even with a 1,200-cow herd, we don't even have anybody here to uh, take care of the calves at night uh, as they calf. They usually take care of themselves. We have very few uh, cattle that we have to pull calves on. And uh, when we were milking Holsteins, that was a big issue, uh, making sure that uh, you help the first calf heifers to calve without having uh, calves that were dead on arrival. So the number of calves that are stillborn is probably around 5% on this dairy. So we feel that uh, uh, this is not a big problem at this dairy. We don't lose any cows from calving. And, uh, so. That makes this job very easy, where we don't even have anybody here at night to take care of them. In summary, I, I would like to list uh, five of the most important things that I enjoy about crossbreeding is the advances in the fertility of the cattle and the longevity and also the uh, production and components that we have and also that the cows are trouble free they take care of themselves and probably to sum that all up it's basically put the fun back into dairy for me and uh, and all the other dairies that are doing that also have the, those same type of comments that it's put the fun back into dairy and you're not always dealing with problems anymore <laughs>